Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares, and it's Saturday, Slashback Saturday. Now, this is a segment my very good friend Joe the Horror Man came up with, where we watch a certain slasher film based on a certain theme and do a review. Now, this week's theme is one of my favorites. It is number two, and I don't mean the stinky kind. This is the second film in any of your favorite franchises. Now, here's a little bit of a disclaimer. Every week when I do Slashback, I try to bring you guys something that you may not have seen before. Um, I try to eliminate some of the movies in my um, in my collection that I haven't watched yet, that I've probably seen in the past, but I just haven't watched it since I bought it, and there are a lot of them. Um, but this week... As much as I was searching for a number two, not the stinky kind, but I just couldn't get around doing one of my favorite movies of all time. So, my number two this week is Friday the 13th Part 2. This, of course, is my favorite number two and probably one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, next to Halloween and the original Black Christmas. And this was actually another number two. And, of course, not the stinky kind. And yes, I'm going to beat it into the ground. This was the second horror movie, legit horror movie, that I saw in my life. Uh, the first being, of course, Happy Birthday to Me. Why did you see the second one? Why not the first one? Well, I was at a sleepover with a couple friends of mine, and this just happened to be the movie that we picked out. Uh, really no rhyme or reason, but yeah. And it stuck with me all this time. Now, Friday the 13th Part 2, of course, is a 1981 film, which runs approximately 87 minutes, and is directed by Steve Miner. Steve Miner, of course, did Friday Part 3. He did House, Warlock, and H2O, Halloween, 20 years later. This stars my favorite final girl of all time, Amy Steele as Ginny. She, of course, was in Tales of Poe, April Fool's Day, and Walk Like a Man. And I believe that was the one with Howie Mandel. This stars John Fury as Paul. He was in Island Claws. In a movie that came out in, I believe, 97 called The Wolves. Never seen it. Looks interesting from the cover. And finally, Adrian King reprising her role as Alice from Friday the 13th Part 1. She, was, of course, was an also in Tales of Poe, Killer Therapy, and An American Bully, which I do believe I've seen. Now, I kind of fought with myself on whether or not to tell you what this movie is about, because I'm sure most of you have seen it. I will still not do any spoilers, but it kind of runs down like this. <clears throat> it's five years after the events of the very first Friday the 13th. And Jason comes back <clears throat> to take revenge on Alice. The lone survivor of the original Friday the 13th. From there, a bunch of counselors, who should know better by now, set up camp very close to Camp Crystal Lake. Actually, I believe it's on the other side of the lake. And they get dispatched one by one. And of course, that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm sure most people know the story by now, but... Uh, a few interesting things about it, and for some reason I never picked this up before, but apparently the film takes place five years after the first. Um, the sex scene between uh, Sandra and Jeff was longer and had full frontal nudity from Marta Kober, and she's, she's very attractive. When Paramount found out she was underage, they deleted it, which I appreciate that they did that. Um, I don't really care for stuff like that, but 
At least somebody did the right thing. Of course, the look of Jason in this movie, uh, Baghead Jason, was inspired by The Phantom, uh, The Murders of Texarkana, from the movie The Town That Dreads Sundown. And the, the last final fact, and everybody knows this, there are a couple kills in the film that take direct inspiration from Mario Bava's A Bay of Blood. But I'll let you watch it and figure out what they are. I'm sure most people already know already. <clears throat> now, <laughs> I actually bought this the other day um, at FYE. I went, um, I'm doing this review on Sunday, uh, the day after last week's Slashback Saturday that you'll be seeing this. And this was $3 at um, brand new at FYE, and I bought it. But wait a minute, you didn't have Friday the 13th Part 2 already? Uh, yeah, I did. But it was $3, and I couldn't pass it up, and I did it because I'm a moron. Now, I do own the DVD copy of Friday the 13th Part 2. I do own two of the sets, the Crystal Lake to Manhattan, um, that has all eight films in it. I do own the four-pack that has Friday the 13th Part 1, 2, 3, and 4, with Friday the 13th, the original uncut. I'm sure you guys have seen the pack. And I do own um, Joe Made Me a Bootleg of a lot of the Friday films that Joe Bob Briggs did a uh, marathon on, which I do really appreciate. And I have watched it several times. <laughs> but <laughs> why did I buy this, mind you? Like I said, I'm a moron. And this is one of my favorite movies of all time. And it sat there and it looked at me. Um, yeah. It looked at me and it said, I'm only $3. Please buy me, buy me. So I did. And I love it. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little bit of the background. I figure you guys will get a kick out of that. I think this has surpassed um, Phantasm, of course, is the movie I own the most copies of. Uh, yeah. Don't know why I do it, but I, like I said, I do love this film. It is a favorite of mine. It has a lot of sentimental value. And another little story. Um, I was talking to Bronco Juggalo the other night. And he noticed that I stay away from reviews from a lot of the major franchises. And I thought about that. Because I, I haven't. I don't really do a lot of the major franchises. I try to do a lot of things that are a little bit off the beaten track. Um, maybe movies that people don't know as much about so I can introduce people to new films but in thinking about it I think there is another a little bit more personal reason I think uh, something that Brad said and I've said in the past um, these are like comfort food uh, or to me uh, Brad used that term I use like a warm blanket um, these films make me feel very warm and fuzzy I don't know why I don't know what that says about me, but I just love them to death. And I think I view them as mine. Um, not that they're not everyone else's too, but I just, it's a little hard to explain. I will probably do the rest of the reviews at some time or another, but I don't bring you guys videos of movies that I don't watch. So if I've seen a movie a thousand times and I decide I'm going to do a review on it for um, Slashback Saturday, make it a thousand one because I watch it right before I, I review it. Depending on, I mean, it doesn't even matter if I've seen it, you know, a ton of times. And I think the personal reason, the most personal reason is I don't want to be told to watch these movies. Um, and, not, and I'm not told. It's just a weird thing with me. I watched this because I just bought it, and I wanted to watch it again. But if I thought to myself, oh, I have to watch Friday the 13th Part 2 for a slashback Saturday sort of thing, I may not have done it, or I may have maybe put it off until the last minute. That's weird, isn't it? But anyway, just a little story. It's just something, a quirky thing with me, but... um. 
Yeah, I, I usually watch this film probably three or four times a year, maybe more. And I love it, along with the rest of the Friday the 13th films. But, um, yeah. So, I'm bringing you a boring one this week. Uh, a movie that is definitely mainstream. So, um, of course, have you seen Friday the 13th? What did you think? I'm sure everyone has seen every Friday the 13th movie a million times. But, um, yeah, what did you think of part two? Uh, definitely comment below, let me know, and check out the Horror Man's original video for his theme for this week and the theme for next week. And if you like what you see in here, hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, peace.